For the second symphony, um, Beethoven, he moves a key up. He goes to, from C major in the first symphony, now to D major. Also a fairly light uh, and happy key um, to use, especially when you think about that around the second symphony, that was maybe one of the worst times in Beethoven's life. The other really bad time was around him composing his eighth symphony. And funnily enough, or strangely enough, both the second and the eighth symphony, I would describe as his two most happy symphonies. So why is that? Well, um, I always say, as I will also later say about the eighth symphony, uh, that Beethoven, he desperately tries not to talk about all the hardships, all the, the, the bad things. In the second symphony, um, while he was composing this, he was staying in uh, a, 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 a city called Heiligenstadt. And there's a very famous letter that he wrote, which is now famously called the Heiligenstadt Testament. And it is essentially a suicide letter. I read it the other day again, and I'm always astonished by how dramatic it is um, and how he he talks not only about himself, but about humanity and what we are going through. And I think Beethoven was a soul who struggled with taking a lot of the world's weight onto his shoulders. Uh, he was very worried, and I think that's also why people often experience, experience him uh, not only through his music, but also the depictions of him. You see this, you know, always. This is Beethoven, right? This kind of busts like this. You never see this. If I should choose one word for this uh, symphony, it is optimism. But it's not optimism in a way where you would say that he is truly optimistic. It's his, um, it's him trying to really stay happy and stay um, uh, optimistic. Because at this time, his family uh, matters were, uh, were not great. His love life was really almost non-existing. Um, uh, and there was a, a lot of political turmoil um, in, in Vienna at, the, at, at that time uh, and in that region at that time. Most of all, he started discover, he began to discover that he could not hear very well. And all these things on top of each other create a very happy symphony. <laughs> The second movement stands for me as really, at least until here, the pivotal point of what Beethoven can do with, with lines and, and with his actual uh, compositional tools that he, that, he, uh, that he has. And I feel that this could almost be, be described, that second movement, as a small uh, version of the third movement, also the slow movement, in the ninth symphony. There is, in some strange way, a lot of gratitude in this movement, almost gratitude towards life. Um, then comes a, a, a scherzo and then comes an incredibly vigorous um, finale. And again, uh, it feels like he, he is, it's almost like you know, when you come to a, 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 a person who is, is, is depressed, you don't say immediately, wow, you look depressed. <laughs> you try to talk about everything else. And this is what I think Beethoven tries to do through this symphony, where he was not very happy. Mm -hmm. 